Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. Zeke Solis, uh, Principal Planner and Zoning. So what we're bringing today is Mankey Park. You know, we've been working on this for a year and a half. And it is basically an update to the original document created in 2008. Uh, matter of fact, a large number of the technical committee is here in the audience. So it was initiated because of a, a city council request from Councilman Ward back in 2017. Neighbor conservation districts, this is what they do and they don't do. Uh, they protect, they empower, promote capable uh, intellectual development, allows fair, objective, and administrative review process, proactive tool for planning. Now, it does not uh, require property owners to rehabilitate existing structures, it doesn't afford these restrictions, it doesn't permit demolition, and it doesn't change underlying base zoning of properties. Now, for clarity, this is an update. So, the, the neighborhood is already zoned for the NCD. So we're simply updating uh, the NCD standards and it'll be a UDC amendment. So in the city at this point, we do have nine neighborhood conservation districts as the map shows. So since October, 2017, we've met with the task force, which had a total of nine regular meetings and nine, uh, nine members with nine alternates for those that couldn't attend. 13 total task force meetings. We presented to the Neighborhood Association twice and we had a public meeting on January 23rd. So as I mentioned, this is a UDC amendment to Article 3, which simply updates the Mickey Park and CD standards. Mickey Park currently in their standards, there are 15 design standards that we addressed. Um, this committee went through line by line. We looked at everything from the, the previous document to see what could be addressed to basically take care of the construction they're seeing now. It's been a huge change from what they en envisioned back in 2008 to what's happening now with all the infill. Some of the standards were pretty easy. The committee agreed on most of them. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go through that portion first, then I'll go to, through some of the controversial then afterwards, we'll discuss some of the comments that we've been receiving since then. So we did go through all of them, as I mentioned, building height, parking. Um, in the, the meeting itself, we did cover dumpster screening for multifamily, things of that nature. Some of them were removed because they're already addressed in other uh, sets of codes like the UDC. Um, mailbox placement is already addressed by the, the post office. Um, lighting wall packs, which is removed. Some of the standards, what we did do was we added some language in the standards currently because what we did find was a lot of non-conforming structures in the neighborhood that had wider driveways than the NCD allows, wider curb cuts, roofing, even fencing. So what we did do is we recommended language in the code or in the NCD itself that says you can replace what you have. That way you're not non-conforming and you don't have to reduce your driveway size. This is just one example in the neighborhood uh, the standards re require a 12-foot maximum driveway. This is one scenario where they can replace it if they needed to. The area was pretty much split. Um, when I say that, the area north of Parlin Place, it's actually more Funston, and west of New Braunfels. This area was already platted. Um, we've got plats from the early 1900s, they were platted at 50 foot wide lots. The rest of the neighborhood varied. So, um, some were at 25 and some were simply not platted at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna address it in that, that regard. So at this point, we looked at platted lots. Um, currently in the code, there's a limit at 50 foot. So what we decided in the, co the committee was you can't replat these lots less than 50 feet, which they already are. The other areas, as we mentioned, we added language that gave them some options because in, in many cases you had 25 foot wide lots and they may have owned a portion of a neighboring lot. So in those cases, um, what we decided was to allow them to, to replat in those scenarios to 35 foot minimums. Otherwise, you'd be going to the board of adjustment for each and every case. Um, this gives you some flexibility um, because like I guess, as I mentioned, this whole area is either platted at 25 or not platted at all. 
We also added um, some language to add a maximum for platy. Um, there wasn't one previously, so the, the committee basically felt we would set up a limit at 75 feet for any replat. Some of the things we discussed were the median block face. Uh, currently, the NCD has a, you identify the median block face, and then you can build within five feet of that. Uh, the committee basically felt to change it to eight feet. Um, staff doesn't recommend going that direction because now you've got a scenario where there's a 10 foot difference up to a 16 foot difference. So staff in that regard will recommend denial of that request. One thing to keep in mind with the committee, it was 19 folks. So it really came down to the most people that attended that meeting, the vote could sway either way. So what we're going to do is we'll go through each section and then we'll just simply identify support. We also identified how to measure the block face. Ultimately, identifying it through either the sidewalk or the curb, whichever is the most uh, prevalent feature along that block. That way, it'll make it easier during inspection to identify if the, the, home, uh, the construction actually meets the NCD standards. One of the things added was a median setback shall only apply when there are a minimum of five existing single-family structures on the block face. Staff doesn't recommend that. Ultimately, in a scenario like this, you've got a large portion of the neighborhood that's zoned multifamily. You're going to end up having to do a survey of the entire block face to identify if it is single-family. Ultimately, that's going to cause an expense on the developer uh, to create a survey to identify that. So that's one recommendation staff doesn't support. Again, the same as I mentioned before, but this is for um, corner lots, changing the five foot uh, distance to eight feet. Again, jumping to 16 foot uh, difference. One of the scenarios here is, the document currently says you have a 50 foot maximum limit to your residential. So the committee came up with a solution. If you have a larger lot, you can extend your house. If you want to say have a room addition, this allows you to go 10 feet back behind the front facade, and you can expand out. Of course, that's going to be dictated by your lots. Most of them are 50 foot anyway. There are very few that are larger than that. Currently, the NCD has a limitation. Any new construction has to be separated from a neighboring house by 10 feet. Some scenarios that we're facing are, you may have a neighboring structure that's non-conforming, that may only be three feet, two feet, in some cases, even on the property line. What that does is, if you have a neighbor that wants to construct, it limits them because now they have to push further back. Normal code requires five feet. So what we're saying here is, if you do have a neighboring lot that is non-conforming and it's existing, you can go ahead and utilize the current code at five feet and ultimately meet bar code. Multifamily also has a limit, um, 80 feet. What we're saying is only those areas north of Portland and west of New Braunfels will have to adhere to that. You have a lot of multifamily south of that area that are much larger than the 80 feet. So what we're saying is they're going to be allowed to, to be grandfathered and continue. If they wanted to demolish, uh, demolish, they can rebuild and they'd be okay. Again, there's a separation requirement for multifamily. Each structure has to be a 20 foot separation. One of the recommendations is that you're allowed to drop the structure down to, um, if you have a non-foreign side setback, you can drop it down to five feet, similar to the residential. Here's another scenario that we added in language. You have a lot of multifamily that are currently non-conforming. So this is along Madeline. You don't have a 20-foot separation between the buildings. Um, by changing this section of code, you're allowed to rebuild your structures without it really adversely affecting your, your construction. Now we're jumping into garages, which surprisingly enough took most of our time. Um, one of the requirements was uh, moving the, the carport shall be behind the principal dwelling for the most architectural feature. This is one where staff does not recommend. Ultimately in this scenario, the NCD was trying to prevent front-end garages. There are some exceptions if you have a uh, substandard lot, but out of the committee, 
the proposal was to allow a garage. So ultimately in this scenario, you could have your roof overhang and ultimately end up with a front end garage. Staff actually does not support that request. Although the garage uh, doors or carports not visible from the front facade, this one was pretty easy for us. Um, ultimately, the, the original document required that your garage be 36 feet behind the front facade, but we couldn't identify where that came from. So ultimately, we agreed that you could drop it down 20 feet behind the front facade. That way you could have a um, garage behind the facade and very similar to this kind of design. There are exceptions currently in the code that state if your lot is less than 45 feet in width, and less than 110 feet in depth, you're basically exempt from the current garage placement. So you can have a front end garage in these scenarios. Basically, by changing the replat requirement down to 35 feet, the recommendation is that we drop that 45 to 35 foot, but, but keep the 110 foot depth. So in these cases, you could have a front end garage. You just meet the requirements. Um, because you have a substandard lot that you just really can't fit the garage behind your front facade. One of the other, this one's rather minor, it's a port -a Ultimately, there was some requests to remove language in scale proportion placement profile. We don't recommend that. Um, basically, by keeping the language as it was, it gives the homeowner some flexibility in their design. So we did have a, quite a bit of public engagement. Um, we sent out notices twice. Um, in the second, 880 property owners were notified. Uh, we did have a kickoff meeting with 30 in attendance. Community meeting had 65 in attendance, um, zoning commission. We identified it on our website. All documents were posted. As each meeting ended, we would post all the comments. Um, we had a matrix where we identified the comments from the meeting. We also uh, identified the recommendations as well as staff recommendation at the end of it. Presentations, we presented to the neighborhood association meeting which had over 40 in attendance. The community meeting, which is on the 23rd, had the 65 in attendance. We received five comment cards, 62 comments by email, some comments received from uh, request exemptions and NCD based on use or base zoning. Staff does not recommend these changes as it will create uh, disparities. Some comments received from NCD should only govern street view. Um, basically, they felt in some of the comments, you can't tell me what to do beyond the front, front facade of my house. Uh, staff does not recommend as the playful structures in the rear yard, such as detached garages and characters, should be regulated. We, had, we placed a survey on SA Speak Up, which as of um, a couple hours ago, we had 43 uh, comments received. We also emailed, to, emailed out to 124 recipients. And notices, as I mentioned, were mailed out to 880. So from the comments, what we did is we, we broke them down by the categories, whether they're in support, denial, whatever it may have been, uh, to try to simplify it as much as we could. Define primary street. That's already addressed in the UDC by address. So whatever your address is, it's your primary street. So we didn't feel that would be warranted. Maximum lot width should only apply to single family residential. Um, basically, staff didn't recommend that either. Some of the concerns were somebody could buy up several lots and build huge multifamily projects, and that would basically change the character of the neighborhood. Minimum replat with Harlan Place boundary should be replaced with north of Pershing. Uh, do not recommend it, basically Pershing. Portions of it are already platted at 50, and portions are at 25 near the golf course. Um, so we didn't feel that that would be necessary to change that. Minimum replat with Harlan uh, Place boundary should be replaced with properties fronting Funston. Uh, we do recommend it because ultimately, if you're familiar with Mankey Park, the park itself, both sides of the park are platted at 50 foot wide lots. The only difference is south of the park is zoned multifamily, the entire neighborhood. So when we're going through this process, we identified that boundary from the zoning as far as the discussions we had earlier. So the recommendation is to change that boundary to funds to include those properties since they are already 50 foot. So that is a recommendation that we do recommend as well. Uh, minimum replot width, except for the following streets. This one wasn't very clear to us um, because some of these streets, as I mentioned, were 50, some were 35. So we're going to need more clarification from the, the residents on this one as well. 
This is for setbacks, to fund the median setback by block phase. One of the recommendations were the, com the community could come together and go basically block by block, and they could identify what that setback would be, that median. Makes it easier for the developers, it makes it easier for everybody since you already have that. Um, we do recommend it, but the only problem with that is would we have the data in time by council? And that's going to be the only question on that. Parking, keep language requiring parking to be behind the vertical plane of the front facade. Again, we don't recommend it. Again, you have some lots that are shorter lots, and it's going to be very difficult to park behind the facade, especially at 25 foot wide lots. So we wouldn't recommend that. It allows, the normal code allows you to park in your driveway. Keep language not allowing parking structures to be constructed in the front yard. Again, we do not recommend it. Placement of parking structures is already regulated in other sections. Driveway front walks allow multiple um, driveways and allow driveways to expand beyond the front facade. Again, we don't recommend it. Currently, the, the UDC or the NCD allows you one driveway for every 75 feet. Um, by doing that, you're going to increase your impervious cover and curb cut. Driveways must extend 20 feet behind the front facade. Again, we don't recommend for those scenarios that you have a um, non-conforming lot or a shorter lot. Trash receptacles. This one, surprisingly enough, was a split. Some residents wanted the trash receptacles for multifamily against the street, and some wanted it behind the property um, screened. So in this case, allow apartment dumpsters to be located at the street. Again, we don't recommend it. Changes the character. Lighting, remove light trespass. UDC already addresses light trespass on Chimney Green Lots, um, so we don't recommend removing that section either. It just simply reinforces the UDC. Building height and principal elevation features. In this scenario, um, some of the residents wanted the building height, which is two, we're recommending two and a half stories, um, to only apply to single family, and basically leaving it unlimited for multifamily to the current code, which is 45 feet in height. Now, again, we don't recommend that either. Building materials allow flexibility or replacing siding. We don't recommend language that allow flexibility and allow replacement in scale, proportion, placement, and profile. What we're trying to do is keep the character in place. Uh, principal elevation features windows allow flexibility in replacing existing windows without requiring like or like match, um, requiring adjusted current size or windows. Um, we do recommend this because what we're finding is you have a lot of older homes that it's very difficult to find windows to match. So we're recommending uh, support of that. And we received quite a few comments from that one. I, I believe there are 34 that supported the window changes. Building size, massing, just language allowing existing multifamily structures separated by less than 20 feet to drop down to 15 feet instead of five. Um, we do recommend it maintains a distance separation for multifamily to prevent massing uh, within eight feet. Garages, carports, allow porta caches to be flush with the front facade. Exemptions should apply to lots less than 35 feet regarding requirements for parking structures in the rear yard. We're supportive of that. Your porta caches can match up with your front facade, and that's okay. So remember, this applies only to the boundaries, and this is only residential. Uh, some of the other NCDs may address commercial. Mankey Park did not. It's strictly residential. Uh, it applies to the properties in this boundary. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, Burr Road to the north, Brackenridge, and then you've got Fort Sam. Tentatively, we're scheduled for March 21st for City Council. Um, we are still receiving comments, so we have the survey still open. Um, myself, staff, we're still receiving comments as well, so we're going to keep addressing those. Uh, before the meeting, I did receive an email from Mankey Park. Um, they have not officially submitted their, their recommendations yet, and if you don't mind, I'll read that real quickly. Mankey Park Neighborhood Association will not put forward an official position on revisions to the Neighborhood Conservation District until after the Zoning Commission public hearing. We wish to understand feedback or comments given at the hearing before submitting our official position in advance of this going before City Council. All right, I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Uh, the uh, citizens to be heard. George Franks, followed by Sandra Birch. Yes. 
Ms. Burge is giving her time to Mr. Grimes. Mr. Grimes, you have four minutes. Joni Brooks is also giving her time. Six minutes. Uh, my name is George Grimes. I live at 415 Harlem within the neighborhood uh, conservation district. And I'm a member of the committee that has been working on the updates. I've lived in the neighborhood since 1975 and been a member of the Neighborhood Association since 1979 and have served on the board and as an officer. I'm speaking today on behalf of fellow NCD committee members, Joni Brooks, Butch Hayes, Lori Sherwood, Isabel Garcia, Francis Redman, and Scott Day. And since I was on the original uh, Conservation District uh, program back in uh, 2008, I'd like to get a little bit of pro, uh, pro, uh, background on that. As set out in the UDC, the purpose of the Neighborhood Conservation District is to protect and strengthen desirable and unique physical features, design characteristics, and recognize identity and charm. NCD design standards may govern building height, building size and massing, principal elevation features, lot size and covering, setbacks, parking, roof line and pitch, architectural style and details, and a number of other issues. This, the, the original NCD was initiated in 2005 and took about two and a half years to, uh, to complete. It was all under the close supervision of the city staff. The planning team included 15 members, about 13 of those were residents, and of those, five were architects and one was an engineer. The first questions that we asked were, what are the character defining elements of the neighborhood and are the elements common to the north and the south of the neighborhood? In order to determine this, we did a survey of every property in the neighborhood. And as a result of the survey, the planning team determined that there were elements common to structures throughout the neighborhood, north and south, regardless of the zoning, regardless, regardless of the type of redevelopment. And these neighborhood defining characteristics were parking behind houses, few garage doors in front of houses, driveways separating houses, creating more space between the houses than the five foot yard setback would otherwise require, sidewalks from the front crosswalk to the house entry, very few uh, front yard fences, few structures in front yard setbacks, the main entries of houses face the primary street, the main entries are defined by a transition space, and there's a common pattern of of front facade windows and doors. What were not uh, common factors were exterior building materials, roof slope, overhang, and roof material. So the second question was, to what extent should the NCD require enforce enforcement of character defining elements? And the range of opinion was from minimum or no enforcement to very detailed standards governing building height, size, principal features, lot size, coverage, setback, parking, architectural style and details, building materials, and so forth. In the end, rather than distinguishing between different parts of the neighborhood, the NCD established minimum standards to protect only the truly character binding elements of the entire neighborhood, regardless of zoning or the difference in housing types. And this, this was adopted by the City Council in 2008. Now, in 2017, Neighborhood residents became concerned about demolition of existing houses and construction of new houses on 25-foot lots, mostly on Natalie, Claremont, and Elmhurst, East, and North New Broncos. The houses are 15 feet wide, separated by 10 feet based on the side yard set that can have a single garage door on the front side. As a result of this concern and some other issues with the NCD, the, the Mankey Park Neighborhood Association Board asked the city to initiate this review. Um, the city uh, issued the review process by a council consideration request, CCR, uh, with the intent to preserve and protect the integrity of the design standards of the neighborhood. Uh, a meeting was held, a committee was uh, selected to work on this, and the committee met monthly from February to December 2018. It soon became clear that on a number of important issues, the committee would not reach consensus some members wanted to maintain and strengthen the standards as described in the CCR. Others wanted to weaken or eliminate standards. The committee began to vote on various proposed amendments, uh, and many of the votes were decided by only one or two vote margins, depending on the members attending the meeting. In my view, and that of the committee members I represent, the design standard should be amended only when there's broad agreement for the change, 
a change either strengthens the NCD or clarifies the standard and does not weaken the standards. We prepared, prepared an amended version of the residential design standards dated February 14, 2019. I believe you all have copies of that. Um, and we would like the Zoning Commission to adopt these standards. Uh, the changes from the original NCD are shown in blue underlined and red strikeout type. While we generally support the staff recommendations for amendments of the NCD, there's a few sections we would like to modify. And the next speaker, Birch, Birch Hayes, will talk to you about those specific sections. Thank you. Birch Hayes, followed by Mary Evans. Anyone else? Francia? Okay. Mr. Hayes, you have six minutes. Uh, thank you, and good afternoon to the commissioners. And I'm bad with mics. I'm too loud, so I'll stand back a little bit here to keep us all in the room. Um, I uh, live at Industry 2 at 330 Elmhurst. I purchased the home in 2013. I uh, moved back to San Antonio to live there as a retiree. First moved to San Antonio in 1976. I have served on the Manatee Park uh, Neighborhood Association Board. And full disclosure, given the times we live in, I'm on the steering committee of the Tier 1 Neighborhood Coalition. But today I speak to you as a Manatee Park resident and member of the committee. I'm going to give you, uh, we agree with the staff recommendations included in the PowerPoint, except for the following. <coughs> Look at 2.1.1, the minimum 35 replatting width for combining lots should not apply to Pershing, Queen Anne Court, Elmhurst, and Parlin Place east of New Brown Falls. Uh, the next section I call your attention to is 2.1.2 and 2.1.3. We agree with staff that the variance from the median setback should not be changed from 5 feet to 8 feet. Rather than using an undetermined median setback, we propose measuring the entire neighborhood and establishing the information as illustrated on the last page of that handout in Exhibit A, showing the median setback for each block face. This would make it easier for staff to review the plans for the building permits. Uh, the measurement can be done with digital measuring devices, and most importantly, Manatee Park residents would volunteer to make those measurements and provide the city with the, that data as is outlined in uh, the exhibit. We'd ask that you insert a new section 2.5.1 as follows. New residential structure must have a driveway that leads to the rear of the property. You have to renumber the other sections in 2.5. Next section is 3.1.1. We object to permitting dwellings with four or fewer units exceeding 50 feet in width. For section 3.1.2, we object to limiting the width of multifamily structures with five or more units to north of Parlin and west of New Braunfels. Continuing on with 3.1.2, the minimum setback for new residential multifamily structures with five or more units adjacent to a non-conforming side setback should be changed to 15 feet. 3.6, we 
We suggest moving sections 3.6.1 through 3.6.3, .3, which the committee talked about, as you've heard, for a long time. Uh, move all sections to section 2.4 so that all sections governing parking garages and carports are together in the same section. Finally, uh, on uh, 3.6.1.1, which would be renumbered to 2.4, 3.1, we agree with staff's objection to the proposed change and wish to go back to the original NCD language, which was when garage or carport entry faces in the same direction as from the facade of the principal dwelling, the garage or carport shall be detached from the principal structure and located behind the principal dwelling. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Appreciate the staff. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce Martin, followed by Joyce Felter. Yes. Joyce Felter, followed by Richard Felter. I believe that when, I'm Joyce Felter. I live at 419 Parland. I've lived there since 1980. Before that, I lived in some other locations in Mickey Park. Um, the, um, my biggest concern has been addressed changing that 35 foot business to Funston. Funston and Parland are almost identical streets. We border the park. To me, it was very important that Funston not be included in that 35 foot thing. But that was all part of a, a bigger concern. We have always been one neighborhood, just one. And this business of dividing us north and south is just not, um, I don't like it. Uh, and so that like the size allowed for multifamily buildings and all, I think it should be the same. Um, I think that's addressed in here in some budget notes. Um, and uh, just anything else actually. The, um, the fewer changes to the NCD, the better and the fewer differences between the north and the south, the better. And it looks like most of what they've said has addressed my concerns, as long as the Funston thing that I saw in there stays and nobody changes it back, I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Richard Felter, followed by Scott Day. Mr. Day, you have four minutes. Good afternoon. Uh, Scott Day. I own several properties within the defined in the district. Former resident of uh, Mikey Park, hopefully a future resident. Um, the purpose of the NCD guidelines has been to make sure that as new development happens, the pieces go together. They fit. They feel like they're part of the family. And if you've been up to Mikey Park recently, you can see that uh, we're fairly heavily sought after area. And there's a lot of new development. So this is an important issue for the neighborhood. Um, two things specific to me, I, I want to make sure I'm understanding this clearly, I'll uh, take my response after my time. Uh, on the 75 foot maximum replant, um, I would think that we want to just keep that at 50 feet. Um, and for reason being that uh, if you buy three lots at 50 feet and put them together in 275s, we're going back to one of our early concerns with the, with the um, NCD committee that we start getting McMansions and that can easily happen uh, in certain areas of the, the neighborhood. So I personally I'd like to see that stay at, at 50 feet. Uh, and then the other thing that Mr. Hayes uh, brought up was the uh, median setback. There's one issue that we have wrestled with over the last 10 years when new development has occurred in the neighborhood is uh, where is that setback from the street? Um, it's, it's been difficult to administer, it's been difficult for people to understand, and what we're proposing is we go in and do one measurement for each block, and that's the number. And so people understand that, the developer understands that, staff understands it, it's easy to administer. Uh, so I think that's an important piece that we need to, need to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Kim 
Kay Turner, followed by Tony Westridge. First of all, thank you all for serving. And um, I am like a part of the uh, Mankey Park neighborhood. I went to Lamar Elementary. I took music lessons from Mrs. Moses on Madeline. I, my parents had their first apartment on Madeline. And so I'm part of the neighborhood. I love the neighborhood. It has a school. But some of these rules and restrictions like detached garages take up the backyard so no kids. I just want reasonable decisions. My grandmother owned and I have now a duplex with a loft over three garages. Back then, when my grandmother and the these, uh, this district was planted in 13 different plats. I am south of Mankey Park, and it was multifamily. So if you have, like I had, three apartments, back then people only had one car. But it's okay with the committee that people park behind each other. There's no flexibility. And if you just take a little field trip, I thought we should get a field trip together and ride up and down that one. I drove down it because of my you know, past history in the neighborhood. And I mean, it looks like two different worlds from up near the New Braunfels as you go towards Broadway. And I concur the Buffalo District and Thorman and Queen Anne and all those districts, then leave it to Beaver. But South is not. It is multifamily primarily. And you cannot totally justify one size fits all. We can't be the same as the Buffalo District. So I don't want property rights infringed upon. I'm a big property rights advocate, have been all my life, and uh, I want to make sure it's kid-friendly. I want to make sure the parking is reasonable. And these setbacks, and personally, I think McMansions are beautiful versus some of the skinny houses and things with no flexibility that we get instead. Thank you for your time. And I still want to take you on that field. Tony Westridge, followed by Jonathan. Right. Lie. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen of the, of the board, members of developmental services. Thank you for your services, citizens, to make Mankey Park a better place. My name is Tony Westridge. Uh, we own the two houses on Funston Place, 402 Funston and 412 Funston. My wife's father built the house at 402 Funston. Uh, she's owned, or her family's owned that house for 40, 75 years. As Kay said, my wife went to the same Lamar. Uh, we don't currently live in Mankey Park, but that doesn't mean we're not a part of the, the uh, association. I've, I've helped out and served with the board uh, of Mankey Park, just to give you a little association of what I am. Um, also, I served on the 2006 and 2007 committee that George Grimes was mentioning, and the current committee, task force committee. I have a lot of respect for the ones that spoke before me. I'm glad they spoke before me on the integrity of the community. George and Butch Hayes, they, they bring up a lot of good points. I don't happen to agree with a lot of these kids, uh, restrictions that we're having to the property. Mankey Park is two distinctive different uh, pieces of, uh, of land. Up there where they built the uh, country club area, the bungalows, they're really nice little, little houses and potentially historic. Historic went in Mankey Park a couple, three years ago, and the citizens overwhelmingly denied the, uh, the use of historic in that area. Um, and we're talking about the complete Mankey Park area. The Bungalow District, maybe, maybe not. I, uh, the, the zoning board, I don't know how you're gonna do your job today. I honestly don't. Mankey Park contains 63 subcommittees and some confusing language. I brought a little display here to talk about materials. Uh, it sounds like I only got about 30 seconds. But we don't want to use 1920s materials on the wood, 
on the wood windows and the outside, we want to be en energy efficient. And I've got a little bit of display. I'll, I'll walk up and down the aisle here a little bit. You can't tell the difference between an aluminum or a vinyl siding window and a wood window from the screen. So that's kind of the display I've got. I'll, I'll just do a little walking of the display. Thank you for your time. Jonathan Fly. Here's the two houses. The maroon ones are wood, the white one is vinyl. And I'm going to make another pass with the siding. Hang on just a second. Oh, no comments. <laughs> Okay. Um, here's, here's the three houses. Mr. Westridge, I'm that. sorry, your time. Your, your time two is minutes is passed. Thank you. <laughs> you can just leave it open right where you're sitting yeah. and then they can look at it. Okay. Ms. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Jonathan, I didn't catch your last name, sir. It's your time. That's all right. Jonathan Fly, thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Fly. I'm a real estate attorney. I was part of the uh, task force. Um, and I just want to give the, the uh, committee some. Um, background. Uh, basically, what you have in front of you here is what I call a disagreement put into writing. It's a disagreement put into writing. Um, because of the way Mankey Park was developed in 13 different planning uh, sessions, uh, basically what you're trying to do is put new wine into old wineskins. Um, it, it, it wasn't well planned to begin with 100 years ago. There wasn't adequate planning. And what you see here in Mankey Park is what happens when you guys don't do your jobs. Because somebody 100 years ago didn't do their job. And now we are trying to fix it. And uh, there was a lot, a lot of conflict uh, on the task force. And a lot of that came from the people who weren't happy with the 2008 uh, NCD. There's a Yale study that calls NCDs zoning by taxidermy. Um, and they felt like their rights were being infringed, and we had about a 50-50 split, and, it, and on occasion it got ugly. Um, there was even one comment uh, in the meeting that if you want to live in a family-friendly neighborhood, move to the suburbs. And folks, as an attorney, that is a federal housing violation. Um, so what I want you to think about in the future we have to have some rules, okay? So you're going to have to pass something. What I want you to think about in the future is that this is a disagreement put into writing, and in the future there are going to be people who come and ask for a variance from you. And I would encourage you to very liberally get those variances because, yes, we need rules, but these rules aren't going to work for everybody and every property because it was so poorly planned. That's all I have signed in to speak. Um, are you going to come back? Or I, I don't know if we necessarily need no, a rebuttal, but if there's any questions, we'll be glad to answer Wonderful. them. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Commissioner Hick, please. Well, of course. I may be mistaken, but. Um, <coughs> This many people showing up, which I'm glad they did to speak in behalf of this case. I don't recall getting any emails. No? Okay. Um, I have several questions in reference to this case, but before I even go into my detailed questions, um, uh. you know yeah, please start down there. Let them go first. Commissioner Zahn, right? Yes, uh, Commissioner Zipes. I don't even know where to begin. Um, so why do I have to go first? Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I mean, there's, there's a lot to, to look at. Um, and I'm trying to think on what actually we would be voting to approve because we saw the presentation and it's like well we concur with this we don't concur with this and so i'd kind of like to see um you know when i was involved in another task force we actually saw the actual language it'd be good if we had this printed out and 
just to actually the uh, the actual language that um, the task force has put put forward is actually in the agenda information. Is it? Yes. So it's a matrix. It's a spreadsheet. Yeah, and maybe if Marco can show it on. on yeah, on the I, screen I see, as well. Yeah, I see, I see. It's one of the supporting documents that are attached. Yeah, yeah yes. I see that, but it's 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 harder to it's harder to understand versus versus seeing the actual strikeout and stuff. It is. It, yeah. It's actually column three. It shows the strikeout language as well as the uh, okay, okay, language okay, that okay. needs that is proposed to be added. Okay. Okay. So that gives you the actual what the actual ordinance would look like. Okay. Now I'm seeing. So if you notice the first column, oh, okay, let's go. The first column is the category. The second column in green is the current regulations that are currently in place that was passed in 2008. Uh, column three shows the discussion that occurred, language that occurred uh, during the discussions with the task force. Column four shows what the final uh, recommendations are that came out of the task force, whether it was through consensus or by votes, or uh, if they were stalemates, then uh, we, we put that into the discussion uh, and, and gave what staff recommends in the final column. But that, that fourth column is the piece that you're going to want to uh, pay attention to because everything in black is what would remain. That's currently code language. Everything in blue is what is being added. Everything in red that strike out is what would be deleted, is proposed to be deleted. But, but then there, but this is not, but you all have recommendations agreeing with some of these proposed changes and disagreeing with the other changes. Correct, right. and that's what's reflected in the final, the final uh, column. Right, the yeah, final and that, column. And, that, and, and for me, that's, what, that's what's been confusing to me, unfortunately. Right, and so the zoning commissions, uh, what the zoning commission can do today is they can either uh, recommend uh, what the task force put forward, or they could recommend what staff recommends approval of, where we have, uh, on some of those major changes that we outlined for you in the presentation, what we do recommend, what we don't recommend, um, or uh, there's an option to uh, continue it, or even deny any of the changes put forth by staff or the task force and uh, keep what's in place today. So those are still the options. And then, of course, this is the opportunity to kind of clarify what that language is. Okay, thanks. That actually helped. McDaniel. Mm -hmm. Kind of like waterboarding here with those last <laughs> 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 so, so, okay. Um, so you raised, one of the gentlemen, I think Mr. Day raised a, a good question, and so the question is to staff, with regard to the 50 foot um, maximum that he recommended because the change to the 75 foot um, would, would possibly allow for a mansion building. What's the thought on that? For the maximum uh, flood lots, ultimately what we decided was, I mean, because you've got 25 foot wide lots. There's, so everything east of New Braunfels are, these are all 25 foot wide lots. There was mention of Pershing and Eleanor, some of the, or um, Ellesmere and some of the others. And basically, these lots are 25 foot. Some of the recommendations were to leave my 50. The max platted lot, ultimately, what that would do is prevent any more multifamily. You've got a lot of multifamily popping up. Some are asking for variances and so forth. Um, and that still gives them an opportunity to go to the Board of Adjustment for a variance if they so choose. But this actually sets a limit. So if you've got a developer who's going to buy up the entire block, it's going to limit them. It gives the board and the neighborhood an opportunity to look at it and make a recommendation based on that individual case. Um, and uh, let me chime in as well. So um, the maximum uh, lot width of 75 that was proposed is actually in line with other NCDs. Uh, Alta Vista that we went through a, a revision with in Beacon Hill also has a maximum platted lot width of 75 feet. What we don't want to create is, let's say somebody owns three 25-foot width lots. 
If you have a maximum replant set at 50 feet, they choose not to go to the Board of Adjustment, then you'll have a development that occurs on a 50-foot wide lot and then a development that occurs on a 25-foot wide lot. And so that's why if, if the person wanted to replant them, they could replant up to a maximum of 75 feet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, still trying to absorb zoning by taxidermy, which I think is really important, but I don't completely understand. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's late in the day, but I am having so much trouble absorbing this. I just wonder if there's a way we can re maybe continue this and repackage it so that we can. I don't know if you're all feeling like you're drowning in this too, but I, I don't know how we're going to get through this, and I don't know what the answer is. I just wish, because first I thought, oh good, now I get it, but then I realized there's like six more pages of what I now get. I don't know if we just need more time. Um, I would certainly be for that. I, I, I don't know that we saw this exactly before, the matrix, it's helpful. Um, we presented it to you, gave it to you at the work session. Yeah. Did we see it in the matrix form? Yes. Okay, because I sure didn't read it when we got it there. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I mean, and I would agree, it is a lot of information. I mean, this is the actual NCD document that's published. It's a lot. And that's why this took over a year because we went through a lot of the standards line by line. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it is a lot of information, and we packaged it the same way we packaged it everything else and the other UDC amendment. It's just there are a lot of standards and there were a lot of um, rewrites, if you will, in order to clarify and provide some flexibility to some of these standards. All I can say is I'm going to try to do better if we continue this. <laughs> um, um, I think I agree with that. Uh, there is one thing I want to talk about uh, with respect from the information provided by Mr. Grimes and Mr. Hayes. Mr. Hayes, I think you mentioned this with respect to 2.1.1.1. Uh, you know, the language that you proposed, I think after your explanation, I understood. So basically, what you're saying is east of North New Braunfels, on Pershing, Queen Anne Court, Elmhurst and Parlin Place, those lots are currently 50 feet and you want that standard to remain. Is that correct? Those lots are not 50, they're, uh, they're the 25 foot lots. Yeah, they're the 25 foot lots. Prior to these changes, uh, the, all the lots that we have the whole neighborhood if you replanted a lot, it was a minimum of 50 feet. Okay. Um, the, the area, this, this actually might be a sufficient answer to my question, because I have a feeling I know where this is going. I'm not going to try to predict the future. Um, but my reason, the reason I ask about this is because I, I find the sort of introductory language, that qualification, a little confusing. And if I can understand what the point is, then I can work hard to try to maybe come up with alternate language that will protect what you want protected, you know, get to that point. But the way it's written right now, I find it confusing. So I'm going to get with you afterwards, I think, and give you my number, and we can talk about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, um, I, I think <laughs> Commissioner has ready to give his uh, recommendation, but let me just see if any commissioners on the left have any uh, uh, questions. Well, I'm, I'm likewise confused by a lot of this. Uh, I see this as kind of like San Antonio. We have a lot of different standards, and this is a kind of bill to enable them. Mr. Fly, I agree with you. We're going to have to have a lot of variances as things progress. But that's part of the process. Um, I would not have a problem with postponing this and kind of going through it in more depth. There's been at least two sides and a lot of research, and they have not totally agreed, and that just kind of bothers me. Okay. Um, anybody else? Uh, Commissioner Gibbons. Oh, you all are speaking my language. I like reading maps like this. I think what would be helpful is to have it in platform to see the plats where you can see the lot dimensions a little bit 
quicker or easily so we can read the read instead of this type of a well street lot map doesn't do anything for us especially if, I guess there was 13 this is done in 13 plats so the uh, and Z can actually pull it up on the website. All of the plaques that we did, we did research on the task force looked at. We actually put them on the website so that anybody could uh, see them. But originally, back prior to 1938, there were a lot of the plaques that were done um, back then, and those are still in effect. There may be some antiquated plaques, but they were platted long before we had city walls. Uh, so we can send that link to you uh, because, again, we developed a website that has all the documents, including all of the 13 plaques. And you'll be able to see that again. It's it's using that information to help uh, create the flexible language to allow um, a replat that would occur for 35 feet to address those property owners that own a 25 foot width lot and a half of a 25 foot width lot um, in order to allow them to replat into 37 37.5 feet. So um, her comment is that this is not vacant land. There, there are some vacant lot, lots in Mackey Park, but a lot of them are, are developed, and um, NCD does not control demolition. So there are properties that are being bought, bought and some of those structures are being demolished, and new development is occurring. Uh, but again, I mean, it's still about the ownership of, of the tract underneath, and so that's well, why that place of the was created. I, I can look at a, a lot, a vacant lot, and know that there's a house there, and understand what you're saying as far as your setbacks. And then also maybe it needs to be put into two more two different type of documents. It seems like you have the land description differences and then the design description differences. Is there a way for us to, to cut out and work on two different ideas at a time? Address the land differences that you want to do, such as the setbacks, and then address all the design differences that you want, such as the garages. That would be a suggestion I have. Okay. Um, question. So um, I think the material, so basically I think what one of the gentlemen might have been trying to say is I think here in the NCD it's saying uh, it has to be the exact original material when you're replacing the roof or the um, siding and whatnot and so is that what the question is? Whether or not it could be something that's similar or Israel? And currently policy is that we can, if somebody wants to replace the entire facade, they can do that. Um, so it doesn't have to be the exact same material if they replace the entire facade. We have that scenario and there are other NCDs as well. We could very well look at language that addresses that. Um, but at, at this time when we review, we do look at similar materials. So it doesn't, you don't have a mix of materials on the same facade. And that is one of the things that we put in the PowerPoint presentation that we would, because that was one of the comments received after the community meeting that we would recommend that language that will, that would allow someone to replace um, you know, placement, profile, form, so that way it's not an exact like for like. Okay, and um, I, I think I probably have other questions, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think it would be helpful, you know, when we um, come back that um, it's easier to digest. <laughs> it's easier to um, I appreciate your presentation, Zeke, and it was very comprehensive. Thank you so very much. But um, now with these changes from the neighborhood, you know, what you are applying, what you're not applying, and things of that sort. So, and I don't know if there's still part of discussion to be had since they presented these, so that might be helpful too if we go back and address these. And we're still receiving comments, so we're going to be taking those comments all the way to City Council. If anything stands out that could be really helpful, we're definitely looking at those as well. Uh, we're receiving tons. And what we can do is we can prepare, uh, in, in the matrix, we can prepare the additional language that we would recommend based on those comments as we presented in the PowerPoint so you can see what that language looks like, either with the blue underli underline or the red strikeout. With what they presented today, you're saying? The changes may or may not include everything. Again, you know, some people recommended some changes. Staff may or may not agree with those recommended changes, and that would be up to the commission to decide. You know, what is it that you would recommend? Oh, but we would be able to tell the difference. The, what was presented today would still, like the markup and whatnot, would be explained whether you considered it or not. 
Right. Uh, what what we received officially was what their testimony was provided today. Some of those comments we received, and, and we did put that in the PowerPoint presentation. We'll put that language as to what that proposed language would look like in the matrix. But again, there might be some things that we don't agree with, like changing the 75 foot width to 50 foot width. That would be something that you guys would have to consider independently from what we're, we would put forward. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Hitt. I just want to ask that quick question. So, was this originally called Mankey Park, Mankey Park Plat, or was the plat called Madeline's Terrace? Each plat has its own type of. Uh, I just want to get a name. history of it, but there. Okay, so I've got them on the. I'm and I guess to me that's important because, other than, was the developer the same developer on all these? Okay, so that's important to me. As in how do you, you kind of carve all of this up? If we're, it, I mean, obviously it was developed under different ideas and different concepts. So um, it's odd that we're going to tag it now as Mankey Park. When did it? When did it just become Mankey Park then? I don't even know the history here, so this is difficult to to do it anyway. So I mean, there's a difference. So oh, okay, so I guess it doesn't matter, right, ma'am? So my question doesn't matter. Um, I think the, I wasn't the, asking you a question. Yet. Okay, yeah, the public hearing is closed at this point. We can um, ask the questions. Right. Place. So let me kind of explain. So plats are plats are going to have its own independent name. That's just the way it works. Mankey Park um, has a neighborhood plan. Mankey Park also has a neighborhood association, um, and that's that's the name that was derived. But and again. I the properties are all just made into, if into that area. The plans that were developed under different design ideas. That's how lots of these plans were done. They were done individually. They weren't done where a developer, if he had a big track of land now, has to submit all the all the plans or the ideas involved on that track of land. He can't parcel them out little bit by little bit. So it's important to me. I'm sorry if that seems like a uh, non important question to you. Um, Commissioner Hill. First off, I like Mickey Park. I used to live on Fairmont for about a year. Okay, so um, I do have major questions. And what I would like to do is, um, Mr. Graham and Mr. Hayes, I would like to meet with you. Mr. Mrs. or Ms. Turner. Okay. I want to also meet with you and take you up on your offer. Because uh, I'm sure there are some things I'm not familiar with. You know, I lived there for about a year and a half. But at this time, I am going to make a recommendation that we continue. Um, actually, I'm looking at, can I? I have a question. Okay. And what I would also like to do is see if we can get a re-presentation. Um, session. Okay, what session of this again? A continuance to win again? Well, uh, I'm looking at April 2nd. I would like some time to where I can get with everyone, to where I can work out, because I can't see doing all of this within two weeks or maybe even 30 days because it's going to take a little time for me to absorb some of this. I'm not in college at 21 and 22 no more, and my brain is a lot older than what it used to be, so it's going to take me some time to work out these details uh, from a zoning perspective, from a business perspective, and a developer perspective. Okay. So um, I would like to see April 2nd. So let me just give you some options. Um, there, an option is is that we can uh, meet between now and a meeting in March, uh, so that we, we don't push it all the way to April, because uh, we do have a timeline that we would like to try to meet. Uh, but if that is a possibility, we can do that. And then when it does come back to zoning commission, we can do a work session briefing at the same meeting, so that way we can go over uh, everything one more time, um, have that 
couple hours to, to go over that information with you and then have the recommendation, the actual consideration at the same meeting. Yeah, quick point of information, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Yes. Did I see the, the, right now the plan is for the City Council to hear it on March 21st? That's correct. That's our tentative um, time frame. Okay. In that case, then, if we can kind of do the uh, work session by March 5th, <coughs> then um, continue this till the 19th. So work session March 5th, and then consideration on March 19th, which means it's expedited to council March 21st. We can do that. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion from commissioners on my right? Yes, Commissioner Winbrow. Um, I know there's certain things you have to do when you present to us, but I would like to request that we just get a real cut to the chase presentation. I don't need to see those slides about we did, we went to this meeting and there were this many people there. It really eats up the time. If we could just get right to this, it would really be helpful. For the work session, yes. Yeah. For the public hearing, no, we need to do that. But for the work session, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, any discussion from commissioners on my left? Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Head? Yes. Commissioner Bustamante? Aye. Commissioner Kamen? Yes. Commissioner Hicks? Yes. Commissioner Sipes? Yes. Commissioner Gibbons? Yes. Commissioner Romero? Yes. Commissioner McDaniel? Yes. And Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you to all the neighbors and all the time that you've invested in this. Thank you for caring. We'll see you in March. <laughs>